Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about Kotlin for happy development. Uh, I'm Sajjad Islam, I'm a senior software engineer at BSI, uh, sponsor of today's event. So, uh, the presentation slides are available uh, on GitHub, so you can check it out later if you want. Also, I occasionally make uh, uh, videos about different Java technologies and other technologies. Uh, those are published on YouTube, so you can check it out. Maybe you can learn a thing or two from there. So what? <laughs> okay, so what is Kotlin? Kotlin is a statically typed programming language. Uh, for JVM. Uh, it started in 2010 by JetBrains, the company behind the uh, IntelliJ IDEA. So at that time, they needed a programming language for their tooling. Uh, they shop around uh, other JVM languages like Scala and Scylla, but none of them quite fit the bill, so they started writing their own programming language. So it started in 2010, but the first version of uh, Kotlin was released in 2016, so it went through a lot of testing before uh, it was first released, so you can expect to have a stable language. It is open source from day one, uh, under Apache 2 license, so you can use it in your project without any problem. It is Android friendly, uh, in a sense, uh, it targets Java 6 runtime, uh, so you can use it in your Android application without using any third-party library like uh, Retro Lambda and other. It is 100% interoperable with Java. That means you can uh, incrementally use this programming in your project. You don't need to completely start from the beginning. Uh, so you can call any method from calling to Java or Java to call in. Uh, that's OK. It has a very easy ramp up time. Uh, I'll show you some code in a minute and you will uh, probably understand all of this because the syntax is very similar to Java uh, but it's more concise. Uh, it has very small runtime, unlike Ruby and other uh, runtimes, it has like about one megabyte, actually less than one megabyte of runtime, so you can use it in your project without you know, making it too heavy. So who is using this? These are the, some names, uh, some big names. Other companies are also using it, but uh, these are the names that looks good on the slide. So Google, Expedia, NBC News. Uh, this year at Google I.O., Google announced that they will be uh, supporting Kotlin as their official uh, language for Android development. Another great news, uh, you can write uh, a script for your build uh, in Kotlin language. Uh, it's not uh, fully uh, released yet. It's, it's still under development. It should be available soon. Uh, also, Gradle suggests that all of the new plugin you write, you should write it in Kotlin. Uh, how can you use it? Uh, you can use it anywhere you are uh, already using Java. You can use Ant, Maven, Gradle, uh, Cobalt. Cobalt is another build tool like Gradle, but it's completely written in Kotlin. Uh, you can use your favorite ID, in this case, IntelliJ IDEA, Android Studio, Eclipse, NetBeans. If you're not an ID person, then you can directly use it in uh, command line with uh, Beam or Emacs. So uh, this is a simple Java application that does nothing but just print hello world. But imagine the things you are doing just to print a single line, hello world. You have to create a file, main.java, within that, create a class, uh, main, within that, public static void main, and then system out print lines. So that's a lot of things just to print the hello world. So what is the alternative in common? It's just this. The main part, what you need. You need a main method, and within that, your argument, and print the then hello world. So that's it. Here, look uh, at the few things that there is no class. So Kotlin supports global uh, functions. So you don't need to create a, a specific file. You can create any file you want. And so you can create a, any file you want. And within that, create your uh, method. And you can run it globally. Since it's a main method, Kotlin understands that you, uh, it will be run at first. And uh, inside there are some other stuff like uh, the argument 
Uh, the, sorry, first of all, the fun keyword, it's a keyword in Kotlin. Uh, you use it to define that it's a function. Uh, inside the argument, you can see the parameters is in the left and type is on the right. So this is the design decision they made. It has some benefits, you'll see that in a minute. And for printing something, just print it and you don't need to you know, follow all those uh, system outline line. Uh, so this is a, again, a simple OJO in Java. Uh, person which has only two properties, ID and name. But to access these properties, imagine, not imagine, just look at the things you need to do. You need to create a constructor, you need to do a getters and setters, and so on. So that's a lot of things just to access two property of a Pojo classes. In Kotlin, it's just one line, your class person, and inside that var ID and var name. Don't worry about the var, I'll uh, explain what this is in a minute. Again, uh, it is often the case you don't just need the properties, you also need to stream, hash code, and equals, stuff like that. So that is, again, like total about 40 lines of code uh, for accessing only two properties. In Kotlin, you just add the data keyword at the beginning of the class, and you get all these functionalities. So val and var, uh, there is two type of properties in Kotlin. One is var and one is uh, val. Val is immutable. Uh, that means once the value is set to a val, you cannot change it. And if you are setting it as a var, then you can change it. So how can you uh, use it? So here, val name equals got. And next, if you are trying to modify this name to the IGI, then you get compilation error. Uh, uh, notice here I haven't mentioned the type of name, which is a string. So Kotlin understand from your context that it's going to be a string. So creating object. Uh, assuming we have a uh, class like this person, uh, to create an object, well, person, equal to person, and your uh, constructor parameters. Again, look at here that we are not defining our type. It understands from context. And also for creating a new object, you don't need to use the new keyword. You can also use a named parameter, so you don't need to follow the sequence of uh, var and val uh, over here, first id and then name, so you don't need to follow that. You can use named parameter, so you can put name first and then id later if you're using named parameter. Default parameter, you can put default parameter uh, to a uh, constructor uh, arguments or method arguments, you can do that. So here um, I have put default parameter uh, for id 0 and name as uh, empty string. Now we can use it, I mean create an object just uh, by using person. You are not uh, sending any default parameter since it default parameter is given. Obviously, uh, since it's a var, a mutable variable, so you can later change it. Uh, you can, if, you, if it's a data class you are accessing, you can do a copy. You don't need to initialize all the things. Just call the copy method, and it will copy uh, the existing person. Uh, obviously, you can uh, change the ID, so maybe there is like uh, 10 properties of person. So you just need to change the ID and keep everything same. So just change the ID, uh, like in the last line. Now safety is a very important feature of Kotlin. So by default, you, can, you cannot send uh, null uh, value to a method or a constructor argument. Uh, here is a simple method print uh, person name, which takes an argument name and prints it. So if you are trying to send now to this uh, method, it won't work. It will give you compilation error. So often uh, we need null. Since we are using Java, null is like in our block. We have to send null. So how do you do, uh, do that? Since uh, Kotlin is fully interoperable with Java, so how Kotlin solves it by adding a question mark. So uh, when you put a question mark in front uh, of the type, then you are saying to the compiler that this value is ex is going to accept null parameters, sorry, null values. Now you can check uh, properties of this person using, a, again, uh, if person question mark dot name they are not equal to null, you can check it like this to, to check if now, uh, name is null or not. Uh, but notice on the following line, you are calling again this print person name, but now here you are not putting that uh, question mark again. Because Kotlin understand, you already checked if it is null or not. That's why it came inside. 
So you don't need to do the checking again to call the following method. Of course, you, if, if you didn't check and directly call, that wouldn't, uh, success, that wouldn't be a successful call because it, uh, the print person name takes a not, not nullable object and you are sending nullable object if you are using a say um, operator question mark. In that case, you have to say the double hash bank to call this uh, following method. So this is a simple uh, function that uh, takes two arguments together and returns uh, the addition of that two numbers. We all uh, have written this kind of code, but uh, there are a lot of boilerplate. Uh, think about the fact that if we are adding two numbers which are type integer, what is the uh, result going to be? It is another integer. So why do we need to say this? Since we know this, uh, a, a computer should be smart enough to know this as well. So how do we do that? You can write single line of uh, single line function like this: add numbers, number one, number two, uh, without writing the return type and all the curly braces. You just put equal number one plus number two. You can send unlimited number of uh, parameters, sorry, uh, values to a function using the keyword bar r. Uh, then you can call this unlimited one comma two comma three and whatever number of uh, amount of value you want to send. And then you can definitely look through it or do whatever you want with that for number in numbers. Now you can send uh, multiple output from a function. There, uh, you can send like two uh, argument using the keyword pair. If you need to send three argument, uh, so three output from a function, you use triple. If you need more than three, use a data class. Now, there is a uh, simple value list, which is a list of pair. In Java world, it's a list of a map. So look at the syntax, pair, Dhaka to Bangladesh, then Delhi to India. So normally the syntax for a map or pair is first pair keyword within that uh, your uh, key and values. But you can shorten it using the following language, uh, Delhi to two keyword inside these two uh, values, Delhi to India, that also produces a map. It's an infix function. I will show that in a minute how that works. Uh, so it's a list. You can iterate over it, obviously, for item in list print line item dot first, item dot second. But this is not a very readable. So what is item dot first? I mean, if someone doesn't know the value, he will be, you know, what is it? How, what is first, what is last? Is there a third? Oh, sorry, it, it's second. What is uh, uh, third? Is there a third? So it's uh, pretty confusing. So you can deconstruct a value like this for city and uh, comma country in list, then it, it's much more readable to you now. Uh, obviously, you can change the list name to list of CDS countries. It, it becomes more readable. Extension function, another great feature of Kotlin. So uh, you can extend any public classes in Kotlin. So in this case, I'm uh, extending the string class and adding a method hello. So uh, that's for extending, you just put the class name, dot your method name, and then uh, inside that whatever you want. And then uh, you, are, uh, you can use it so I'm using it like this, uh, val name, and uh, then I'm calling this uh, extension function name dot hello. You can use directly with the stream quotation dot hello. Another extension function should equal. It checks if two string is same. So one uh, string dot should equal another uh, value that checks if value and the uh, value is sent from the call. In this case, maybe a name. Uh, if it is same or not, and then you just return value if it equal to this. So we all have written this kind of code, and you can call it like this. This should be called this, but you can um, make it look even better uh, by using infix notation at, in front of the function. Uh, so if you use inf uh, infix, then you can call it like this. This should be called this, which is similar to what I have shown in the last slide two, uh, Dhaka two or uh, in Delhi to India. Higher order function. Higher order function is a function that uh, takes a function or returns a function. Uh, you can uh, use that in Kotlin as well. So this is a higher order function, which uh, uh, in the first parameter, actually the only parameter, is a function. The function signature is it takes two uh, integer argument and uh, then returns not returns the integer. So uh, 
to call this function, you can create a function like this, my sum, which takes two arguments in the integer and returns x plus y. And to call this function, you call it like this, higher order, uh, within the parentheses, colon, colon, and there will function name. So you don't need to uh, do this if you want. Uh, you can use lambda expression over here. So higher order, given an input x comma y, give the output x plus y. So you can call it like this as well. So this opens up a lot of possibilities of writing DSLs. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, fun is using. I have, I have created a function called using, uh, which takes the first argument closable and then uh, a action, which is a lambda function. So here inside, you can do a try catch action, and in a finally block, you say uh, you can say uh, that object got closed. So we use uh, this kind of uh, closable object, for example, JDBC or file or something like that, uh, where we need to uh, close it at the end. So sometimes we forget, but if we are using DSL like this, so there, uh, then there will be no chance that you are going to forget. It will be automatically closed, and you don't need to worry about that. Condition, condition works same as Java. The same as Java, but you can also use condition as an expression. Here, uh, condition test, uh, we are using uh, val result equal to if input greater than 100, then uh, gt will be the value of uh, result, otherwise lt will be the value of result, and then you can do something with that result value. Class inheritance, by default, Kotlin classes are final. That means you cannot uh, inherit from it. Uh, let's say we have created a class employee, and uh, you, it has a vacation list as constructor argument, and it's extending from the person class. So for extending, just put colon. Uh, for extending and uh, in, uh, implementing a syntax is same, just put comma, comma, comma. And it will understand if you are using multiple in uh, inheritance uh, like this, it will give you compilation type error. Another plus, uh, contractor, who also extends from function. Uh, now to check if a person has a vacation list, you can uh, write a method like this. Uh, one valid vacation, who takes a person. And you can check if this person is an employee, then you can uh, check if it has how many vacation days and do some calculation over that. But notice that inside the if statement, we are not using any casting. So when we checked already if a person is an employee or not, it understands inside that it is definitely going to be a person, otherwise it wouldn't go inside the if statement. And there are many more features like this in Kotlin. It will take me a day or two maybe to explain all the features of it. So I'm <laughs> stopping now, so uh, saying whatever else uh, Goblin has to offer. So Panko is another library by Goblin. It's for uh, your Android development. Uh, if you're using a uh, view layer in XML, we all are using it. So you can replace it with Goblin code using this library. Uh, it uh, opens up the possibility of reusing a code rather than saying the same thing over and over. Android extension, we have always, and any of you who are using uh, developing in Android, you all have written this kind of code. Uh, text view and find view UI, ID, then cast it. And finally, you can set some value or get some value from it. In Kotlin, you just call the ID, or set text or get text, whatever you want with that. So you don't need to uh, specifically mention this is a text view, cast it, or whatever, just one line of code. All open plugin, uh, as I have already mentioned, that uh, Kotlin classes are by default uh, final. So you need to, ex to extend it, you have to put open keyword. Uh, so all open plugin helps you uh, on that. If you're using a Spring application, then you need some classes like the settings and uh, beans to be open. So if you are writing open is cumbersome. So in that case, you can use this plugin. It uh, makes certain classes that has certain annotation open uh, by default, so you don't need to explicitly say that. The Spring Boot already supports uh, from a long ago, actually. Uh, you can check uh, out Kotlin as a programming language you want to use in uh, Spring Boot if you want. What's coming next? There are lots of things coming next, but I think these are the most exciting. Uh, Coroutine is a lightweight uh, thread that uh, replaces, not replaces, you can use 
in ex without using Java thread. Java thread is very, uh, I mean, Java thread is very high in on weight, but Kotlin is very lightweight. Uh, so you know, imagine if you are you need to uh, execute thousands threads at the same time. Depending on your machine, it will uh, give you an stack of the exception. But uh, the same operation can be done in Kotlin without any problem. Java 9 support. So you already have all the things Java 8 has to offer in Kotlin current version. Uh, Java 9, when Java 9 is available completely, you will get all the Java 9 feature in Kotlin as well. Uh, again, it uh, targets the Java 6 runtime, so it, you can use all the newest feature without uh, going changing your JDK. Kotlin is going native, so uh, it's going to directly compile down to your LLVM uh, code, so you can directly uh, communicate with your machine. Next step, so where do I go from here? You can go to kotlinlang.org. Uh, they have really good documentation. Uh, hopefully, you will understand everything over there. You can do uh, go to try.kotlin.org, so you don't need to do any setup. Uh, so directly go to try.kotlin.org. There you can uh, use the interactive web IDE to learn Kotlin. Uh, Kotlin Poons is another uh, interesting thing. You can uh, learn Kotlin by following the interactive tutorial over there. Kotlin has a really good community. So uh, as of last night, they have almost 11,000 uh, in one channel, general. So if you have any question, you can definitely ask over there. If you have some discussion, you can do that over there. Obviously, you can ask a question on Stack Overflow as well. So that's all for now. Thank you.